Hi, this is Mary with The Daily Sew, and today I'm going to show you some basic hand stitches. Now, we all have sewing machines, and we rarely ever use hand stitches to construct a garment, but for some parts of the garment, we usually will use a hand stitch here and there. Uh, sewing on buttons is the least of it. And also, when mending clothing, especially if you... Um, rip something where you can't get to by machine, you're going to want to know some hand stitching. So let's get to it. When stitching by hand, you want to match your thread and your needle to the type of fabric you're using. Heavier needles for heavier fabrics, or I should say thicker needles for heavier fabrics. Lighter, smaller needles for finer stitches and finer fabrics. When you're buying needles, you will notice that if the needle is a size 12, it's much smaller. If the needle is a size 3, it's much larger. This is somewhere in between probably a 9. All right. When you cut your thread 18 to 20 inches or so, the end of the thread that comes off the spool first is the end of the thread that goes through the needle eye. Why is this? Well, you can feel your thread if you run your fingers along it. It has a direction, just like corduroy. You know, when you run your hand down corduroy, one way it feels smooth and the other way it feels rough. Thread's the same way. When I run my finger, thumb, down the thread, it feels smooth in one direction and it feels rougher in the other direction. That's the nap of the thread. And you want it, when you're putting it in and out of the fabric, you don't want to go against that direction because it just causes more tangles. It's, it's not the end of the world. It's just easier to deal with if you go with the direction of the thread. Also, when hand stitching, you can, you have the option of securing your thread with a knot at the end. Or, uh, it's not a very big knot. Or, you could do a little couple back stitches to secure your thread at the end. So let's get started. Oh, also, you could use a thimble. You would put that on the middle finger of your sewing hand. If you're right-handed, you're right-hand, left-hand, you're left-handed. This helps push the needle up from the underside of the fabric. Very good for heavy fabrics or lots of sewing. And you could also use beeswax. Also helps prevent tangling, strengthens the thread. Do it before you knot, though. You simply run the, oops, Simply run the thread over the beeswax, get a little wax on it. I'm just going to do a couple stitches, so I don't feel I need a thimble or beeswax, but it's always good to know. So first we're going to start with the most basic of stitches, which is the running stitch. And when you sew by hand, you want it permanent. Well, sometimes actually... That's not true, you want to baste it. But if we're doing hand stitches, we want permanent hand stitches to hold the seam. The running stitch is a pretty basic stitch. Oh, my knot's not big enough. And it's good for almost any seam that doesn't have too much strain. It's also good for, if you make the stitches bigger, when you're easing or gathering something in, a non-permanent way to stitch, a non-permanent stitch, something you're gonna take out, you want the stitches bigger. If you're right-handed, you're going to work right to left. If you're left-handed, obviously, you're going to work left to right. Some stitches, a few out there, will have you go in a particular direction. The opposite, I mean. So, if it doesn't say, you're going to go from your dominant hand to your less dominant hand. All right, let's get started. Running stitch. You bring your needle up from the underside. I don't know if you can see this so well. And gather a couple stitches on the needle at a time. For permanent stitches and a running stitch, you want to go for about a sixteenth or an eighth of an inch. And in metric, that's two to three millimeters. I'm doing these a little big. Well, at least the first one. Whoops. See it? Then when I got a couple stitches on my needle, I'll pull it through. And again, a couple stitches on the needle, or you know, three, four, whatever you're working with. And you don't want to do too many. 
pull it through. And that's a running stitch. Let me show you a running stitch done with two pieces of fabric stitched together. This is the front, this is the back, looks the same on both sides. And pulled together, it's pretty good, pretty, pretty durable. Running stitch, most basic of the stitches. All right, let me show you a back stitch. A back stitch is and it's, uh, kind of similar to the running stitch. It's definitely one of the most strongest hand stitches you'll do. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna knot this and start a new thread. So let me see how I would do this. Um, well, first of all, I have to get to the back side. So let's get to the back side. All right, I'm gonna come up from the back. And instead of going forward to the left, I'm gonna to go to my right, and it's considered backwards because, again, I'm right-handed. So I'm gonna to go to the back, then I'm gonna come up from under it about one stitch over. See that? I went over about one stitch length, and I'm coming up onto the left side about one stitch length. Pull your needle through. Now it's easy. The first one is literally got to guess, but the next stitches are easier. So the second, third, fourth, etc. stitch go into where the the last they go down at the begin at the end of the last stitch, and they come over again about a stitch length. And again, you go into the end of the previous stitch and over about a stitch length. This is a great stitch for repairing seams. When I used to wear vintage garments, um, the, you know, you get a rip under the arm, someplace where there's a lot of strain and it's hard to reach with the machine. This is the best stitch for repairing. Again, you go in through the back, I mean, sorry, you go down at the end of the previous stitch and over about a stitch length and up through the fabric again. That's a pretty neat stitch. I like that stitch. And here's what it looks like when you sew two pieces of fabric together. The back stitch front and the back of the back stitch, you can see where it overlaps so much. And then when you, it's a lot of threads, a lot of threads, pretty durable. Like I said, it's one of the most strongest hand stitches. That's the back stitch. All right, let's start with a new piece of thread. All right, the next one is called the half back stitch. I guess you can tell by the name, it's very similar to the back stitch. You will come up from the back You will go down backwards. You will come up one stitch length. But this time, if I was a back stitch, I would go down at the beginning of the last, uh, sorry, I would go down at the end of the previous stitch, but this is a half back stitch. So I'm gonna go down only half backwards. You see that? I'm not going all the way to the previous stitch. I'm going halfway back. And again, carry it over one full stitch length. Pull through. Go back half of a stitch length. Down. Come up over. I should say, go over and up one full stitch length. Pull through. Go back half stitch length, go over and up ooh, a full stitch length, go back half, and you come over a full. And let me show you that. 
This is the half back stitch done on two pieces of fabric. This is the front. This is the back. You can still see all the looping like in the back stitch. Not quite as much because you only went half back. But again, it's a really strong stitch. And it's great for understitching interfacing so they don't roll out. There you go. That's how it looks like. I'm, I'm really pulling it so you can see it. I also used a thicker thread so it would also show up a lot better. That's the hat back. All right, the prick stitch. Prick stitch is used a lot for setting hand setting zippers into garments. I love it for putting in centered zippers into a garment because it can become pretty much invisible. It won't be invisible when I show you because I'm using contrasting thread, but if your thread matched, it would pretty much be invisible. So prick stitch, just like the back stitch and the half back stitch, except this time, your stitch going backwards only goes back one or two threads. You see that? And it comes up over a full stitch, the regular full stitch, 1 8 to 1 16. But only goes back one to two threads. Whoops, that's probably three threads. There we go. There we go. And again, comes up over a full stitch length but only goes back one or two threads. And this is how it becomes invisible. <laughs> Just a tiny, tiny, tiny stitch, but on the underside is a pretty strong stitch. It is great for setting in zippers if you're gonna do it by hand. Not invisible zipper, just a regular zipper. And if you have a, any kind of fabric with a pile, it really just disappears. So this is called the prick stitch because it's taking, I guess, little pricks of stitches, of little fabrics. I'm not sure how it got this name. Anyway, you can barely see those stitches. And if the thread matched, it would just disappear. So that's the prick stitch. And let me show you. When you sew two pieces of fabric together with the prick stitch, you can see my threads because I did it in contrasting color. This is the front. This is the back. Again, it's pretty strong. It's great for zippers, like I said. And when you pull it, it's a good stitch. This is a great stitch to know. Great stitch to know for garment construction. All right, the last stitch I'm going to show you today is called the hand pick stitch. The hand pick stitch is like the prick stitch, except that it's a decorative stitch. It's not meant to sew two pieces of fabric together. You'll do it in a single layer. And you'll want to do it with a thicker fabric, I mean thread. This thread is button, button cord or button thread, buttonhole thread. You could also use a top stitching thread. Well, it's just a little in between all purpose and a button thread. This is all purpose. I'll show you the difference if you can see it. Um, you can see that the button thread is a lot thicker than the all purpose thread. And the reason you do that is because it is a decorative stitch. You want it to be decorative, you don't want it to blend into the fabric. So, the hand pick stitch, just like the prick stitch except single layer, you're coming in up from the bottom. So, if you're not, you see this a lot on vintage garments on the lapel. It traces the outline of the lapel a lot. And obviously, since you don't see it on the underside, it's done on the lapel before the lapel is sewn together to the uh, to the under collar or the under lapel. So we'll go over one to two stitches. I will go. I'm sorry. We'll go back down into the fabric, one or two stitches. I'll go a little bigger because it is a decorative stitch. You could adjust for whatever look you want. Come over a full stitch. And down just one or two well like I said it's a decorative we'll go two three threads over to the back come to the left one full stitch and back 
backwards, a couple threads over, forward, a full stitch length, draw through, backwards, a couple stitches, a couple threads. <laughs> I can get my terms all mixed up here. And forward, a full stitch. See that? See how it differs? Here's the prick stitch that you want to be invisible. And here's the pick stitch that is decorative. Hand pick, hand pick stitch. Let's get the proper name. All right. So again, here is the hand pick stitch up close. And you really want that thread to lie on the fabric in a bead-like fashion, and it does. So this is not too tight when you pull these threads, not too loose but not tight either. And in fact, in all of these th threads, you don't want to have any puckering or straining. You want to keep your tension pretty even. Pull tight enough, but not too tight for any puckering or straining. I guess like with knitting and crochet, you would just want to have an even tension. So there's the hand pick stitch, single layer. There's the back. Looks like a uh, prick stitch in the half back and the back stitch. It's a hand pick stitch, that's for decorative. Decorative. Prick stitch, awesome for setting in zippers. Half back stitch, uh, mainly used for um, putting under stitching interfacing so it doesn't roll to the front. Back stitch, strong stitch, awesome for mending. And the running stitch, your most basic stitch. The one you learned in Girl Scouts, the one grandma tried to show you how to do. Oh, <laughs> I re my first running stitch was a bean bag, like in first grade, and I made my stitches so wide the beans came leaking out the holes. <laughs> but I learned. I got it a little closer. All right, that's five basic stitches. Well, this one's a little extra, but uh, great stitches to have in your repertoire. And thank you very much for watching. If you have any questions, send them to me at thedailysew.com. Thanks for watching. Bye.